10, 9, ignition sequence starts, 6, 5, 4, 3, hit. Welcome to the Alien Probe Podcast. Rick is the senior counterintelligence man, and the provost marshal walked the perimeter of the debris field, examining the wreckage scattered there. Most of the pieces were small, no more than a few inches long and wide, but some were measured a couple of feet on one side. They came to one piece that was about two feet by two feet. According to Rickett, it was slightly curved. He locked it against his knee and tried to bend or break it. The metal was very thin and very lightweight. Rickett couldn't bend it at all. As they prepared to leave the crash site, the senior CIC agent turned to Rickett. You and I were never out here, he said. You and I never saw this. You don't see any military people or military vehicles out here either. Yeah, Rickett agreed. We never even left the office. This from the UFL crash at Roswell. I'm Doug, and joining me is Dr. Bill. I decided to identify myself on this one, Bill. Oh, is How that, you doing? that new? That's good. That's I good. don't know. Yeah. 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 So, um, <laughs> yeah. Who, who, who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Yeah. Who am I talking to? Soon we'll have video, and we're, you'll be able to see us. We're, that we're, we got a little work to do on that. Yeah. We'll get so, um, how we do? How you doing this week, Bill? How we doing? Uh, doing fine. I uh, got a new microphone. Hopefully, that'll make the sound a little better on my end. And we're slowly climbing. I think I, I think you should plug it. What, what is it? What's your new microphone? Because you oh. sound good. Oh, it's a, good. a Fi Fine. It's basically a uh, Yeti clone, a blue Yeti clone, and they sell it for a little cheaper. And it actually was on sale, might still be on sale on Amazon for $75. You Where, heard it here first, folks. Heard it here. Get your, get your, get your uh, <laughs> you Black Friday deals. out there. <laughs> get your Black Friday deals right now. Right here, right now. So we're talking some Roswell today. We're talking a little UFO history. We finally finished the Rupelt book. And uh, we're, we're kind of continuing on with the, the theme. We're regressing a little. Well, I've got the report on the UFO wave of 47. Yeah, I just, I sent, that, I just sent that to you. And I can talk about that a little bit. Um, so we're, we're thinking about a couple topics. So we're, we're thinking about Roswell, which we want to get more into. And the report on the, report on the UFO wave of 1947 by Ted Blucher with an introduction by James E. MacDonald, which came out in 1967 and says it was updated in 2005 by National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomena, NICAP. NICAP. So if, this is on their website and you can download it. And 1947, when anybody thinks of 1947, they think of, um, Arnold. Arnold and Roswell. There's a few incidents together. Arnold Roswell, the Maury Island incident. Maury Island incident was was a big deal. I mean, Arnold was a big deal. Um, but generally, we, we don't think of, of 1947 of having a lot happening. And I was looking at this report, and this guy, Ted Bloker, went through and was traveling around for his job, so when he was at different places, he would go to a library and he'd look at back issues of the newspapers. And he discovered about, in the United States, there were about 800 UFO sightings in 1947. And not just those three, like Roswell. And Roswell, and when they originally came out with this report in 1967, Roswell wasn't even mentioned in it. I think it's in this updated report, but I've just read the introduction and the preface, preface at this point. Right. Um, well, did Maury's in, Maury's in there. It's interesting that Roswell's not in it. I mean, this is a couple of, there's been a couple of different um, cases where they don't talk about Roswell. When, and um, I think it was just such clamped down um, oh, it was a, security on. Yeah, I'm not sure know. why it was excluded. Um, 
there might have an explanation once we get into this this a little bit. But this is a uh, interesting document. It act, has a chart showing the the number of sightings given by date. So it looks like there was a peak of UFO sightings around July 7th of a, over 160 sightings on a single day, according to according to his uh, research, to this guy's research in newspaper art archives. Well, I saw that too, and it's got maps and everything in there, and it, it's interesting to see how many sightings were in 47. And it just seems like the cases have... I don't know about you. I look up in the sky a lot, and uh, I don't really see anything. But I mean, it's almost like they were just everywhere, all over the place. It looks I mean, that it looks yeah. that way. Well, there was clusters too. There was a big cluster. Just looking at the maps, there's a big cluster in uh, Washington, Seattle area, or the right. Pacific Northwest, Oregon, Oregon, Washington area, not not the Seattle area. But we're yeah. just we're just started. I just was looking at this this morning and I sent you a copy and I read the the introduction by poor James E. McDonald who I think was um, I don't know what you'd call it I think he was psyoped to destroy his uh, life he was psyoped psyoped Does he do it psyoped psyoped he had uh, he had a uh, covert operation working against him to um, destroy his life it's my opinion in my personal opinion and he wrote the introduction for this original thing in 1967 and he he does say some some pretty interesting things which I've marked a couple of passages and he says in the two decades that have passed since 1947 there has been distressingly little progress made towards elucidating the true nature of UFOs. But elucidated or not, they've refused to go away. And this is now 70 years later. When he wrote this, this was 20 years later. Uh, press fun poking, curiously fallacious official explanations have mostly assuredly held up real scientific progress by conveying the distinct impression that UFO problem has only been a nonsense problem. But ridicule and snide comments notwithstanding, citizens in all walks of life have continued to report, often in the deepest puzzlement and often in a state of suddenly enhanced concern that they have witnessed objects fitting no conventional natural or technological categories. This being so, it seems long overdue for the scientific community to put aside arrogance and prejudgment to overlook preconceptions and past glib comments about all the unbalanced persons who just don't know what they are seeing and to dig into the facts. Those facts today are non-objective instrumental meter readings. Those facts are today not objective instrumental meter reading, but anecdotal accounts of things seen by persons other than noblest is unfortunate. If only science had not been so casual back in 1947, so ready to believe what so many feature writers and ill-informed official spokesmen, spokesmen had to say about UFOs, we might today have an abundance of meter readings with which to work. But 1947 began a two-decade, actually make that a seven-decade period of misinformation, so we are still hardly at the start of an adequate scientific examination of UFOs. Okay, we've got Orion BCS, our uh, latest uh, or our our latest um, advertiser. So we're going to roll right in. Hello, Orion BCS. At Orion BCS, their goal is to find the best program and rates available for your business. Their team has years of experience helping clients find lower rates for processing credit cards. They understand that every business is different. So let them spend the time to find out what suits your business needs. So visit OrionBCS.com and let them begin the process towards saving you money to help you realize your financial goals. Visit OrionBCS.com and contact them today. All programs of OrionBCS are subject to terms and conditions. Visit OrionBCS.com for more details. 
Bill is frozen in time. <laughs> I'm not frozen. You're frozen. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. Uh, let me I'm do frozen. You were frozen. Let me do it. <laughs> I seem to be okay on this end. Yeah, well, I was okay on my end, too. <laughs> Welcome to the internet. Here, let me do a speed test. Oh, you're now you're frozen. Yeah, yeah. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. We've been doing great. Yeah. Oh, my, my internet is okay. <laughs> My internet yeah. is my. I have, a, I have a nice, speedy internet. I just did a check. Oh, uh, so it's you. All right, something's going on. I don't know what's going on. You getting throttled? Getting uh, throttled? Yeah, we were doing. We've been out here for. We've been talking for an hour, and we haven't had this problem. And now all of a sudden, we're having having uh, issues. Okay. All right, you. Things make me. Am I still frozen? You're you're breaking up and you're oh and you died. We are recording again. How's your how's your audio? Everything sounds good. How about you? Yeah, it sounds good. This is okay. We're not cutting out. We're not freezing. Okay. This will this will simplify. Maybe now we can talk. We can we can talk for an hour. And nothing happens, and then when we start to record, it's a problem. Yeah, ah. I think it's the I think it's the men in black are messing with our. Uh, yeah we're just being they're messing with us <laughs> um, what happens to all these other podcasts that don't have any issues yeah no they all do they have <laughs> um, probably have faster internet and are more tech savvy than we are with us trying to sort of climb yeah. this this no doubt this tech bubble well we're doing all right <laughs> well and i'm using a, a somewhat a, insurmountable tech bubble and I'm using a 13-year-old yeah. computer, which I've upgraded. It seems to be doing all right. So it's uh, not running as hot as it was. I don't think that. I don't think that was the problem. I hope it wasn't the problem. <laughs> do, you, do you need a do you need a, do you need a radiator on that thing? Uh, I have a fan control, which I've I can I can manually run the fans. Or I thought I could. And it's on the computer. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have an app that will monitor the temperature, uh, internal temperatures and the fans, and I've uh, adjusted them slightly. It's doing fine. It's doing fine. It's not too hot. It's cooler than it was. And I can turn. I can always blast these fans, but then we're um, they'll probably interfere with our our audio. Yeah, the audio. So we yeah. were talking about the. So what I recently discovered was these document from NICAP that talks about the hundreds of UFO sightings in 1947. And before we thought, I mean, as, I don't know what you knew. I didn't know anything since I started reading this stuff, but it seemed that there was a few, only a few things happened in 1947, which was the Arnold, what's his first name? I can't remember his Kenneth, Kenneth, Kenneth Arnold. Kenneth Arnold. Kenneth Arnold. There is the Mari Island, which everybody says is a hoax, and that's a weird story too. Because yeah. because yeah. Chrisman been... Chrisman is some sort of turned out to be some sort of espionage asset of some sort. And well, yeah, and that's what, yeah, and that's what we tied into, you know, years later, forty-seven and sixty-four. Is Sixty. Kennedy? Well, it was that. It was that JFK. Did he get assassinated? Yeah, Kennedy was assassinated in sixty-four, and then there was that investigation by that district attorney in New Orleans, which uh, Garrison. Yeah. I, which Oliver Stone made a movie about, which is a good movie. I'd never seen it until you recommended it. It's a, it's, it's, it's good. It's awesome. And Chrisman is speculated to have been one of the three bums that were picked up right. by the railroad the tracks. Yeah, three tramps. I don't know if you can hear my chair squeaking. Yeah, mine is too. 
So Chris, Chrisman, yeah, <laughs> not it's not farts. I'm not it's farting. not in, not in the budget. It's not yeah. farting. Yeah, there's no chair in budget. the budget. This is a, I have a good chair. It just makes noise. Um, <laughs> so Chrisman is a weird guy, and from we talked about it last week. The uh, he's some sort of espionage asset. It ties in ties in with it somehow. He got, we don't really know how he tied in with, with uh, Dahl. But as I said last week, the, um, deposition he did with Garrison, that's the DA in New Orleans, he mentions that he still knows Dahl. And that's, uh, 30, 20 years later. Yeah. He mentions that he, he knows the guy and the guy had some sort of business used, uh, mechanical equipment business in the Tacoma, Portland area, I guess. So Dahl is around, at least at that point, and he's still friends with Chrisman. And then the other, so that, and then the third incident that most people are familiar with is uh, Roswell, which we just started looking at. And the Roswell inc incident, which started with the book by Charles Berlitz and William L. Moore, which was published in 1980. And that got, that put uh, Roswell on the map, so to speak, about a potential UFO incident. And as we've learned, and we both have the book, there were potentially two incidents that happened, and not just a single one. But we'll have to look into that in the future as we move, move forward through the... Yeah. Yeah, it's the corona. The corona crash, which yeah. confused issues. And maybe we can sort that out a little bit, but who knows? Well, the far, you know, something I ran across as I was perusing this um, the farmer that just the, the crash, Roswell crash, the farmer's land, he took the, oh, he didn't do it, not the Roswell crash, but there was an Ohio crash, balloon crash and the guy put it i don't know if you read this it was a farmer and he put it in his he took the balloon and he put it in his uh shed and this balloon one of those high altitude balloons yeah uh and he gathered it up and he put it in his shed and he left that thing sit for years this was and this in, is during 40 this is in the during uh, this time this is this wasn't in the roswell book was it this is something else this is in the uh ufo crash at roswell book that one um, you know, by Burlitz and Moore. Uh, oh, it's, you know, it's a different one. Randall and Schmidt. Randall, Randall and Schmidt. Schmidt. I didn't know. I haven't. I haven't. Uh, I've been looking at another one, but I haven't. Uh, I haven't been looking at that because I've been looking at other stuff. Now, Brazel's the the farmer who's uh, the Roswell crash landed on his land, right? Uh, yeah. I, I, don't know. I don't know. So this um, this was so, a farmer. You saw this as a farmer in what state? I think it was Ohio. Ohio. Okay. It, but it was just interesting that it, it really doesn't prove anything. anything. But it was just interesting that he just he just grabbed the thing. He just found, I found me a balloon and I'm going to keep but it. But he didn't. Yeah. And it's, I uh, always wanted a big balloon. We had, uh, when I worked for the furniture rental company, we had one of those balloons that you would, the little tiny dirigible that had your name on it when you'd have a sale. And he used to be able to fly those. I don't see them anymore. Oh, you could float it up above the business. I don't remember yeah, that. Was that that was in Hayward? Yeah, I don't we, remember. We had seeing the store that. in Hayward. Yeah. Well, no, I, we didn't have it. We had it at one of the other stores. I never had it. At Hayward. Oh, yeah, because we would we, we would have probably done something weird with it if we yeah, had access. Yeah, you fill it up with helium, and it takes a million pounds of helium to fill it, and then but it got loose, and when we had it signed. <laughs> We had a sale up in Portland, so this thing escapes because you know people don't secure stuff. Properly. Yeah, and um, it blew into this person's yard miles. We're still in the state, but it was miles away. Uh huh. So we go up. Uh, not myself, but they they contact us. Says, "Hey, we got your we got your balloon here," and uh, we go, "Cool, can give us your address? We'll come get it." Well. I'd like a thousand dollars for <laughs> yeah. for a landing fee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for a finder fee. Is 
<laughs> they did, this went back and forth for probably three weeks with the uh to negotiate. The, the, yeah, they had to negotiate to get they took our balloon hostage. <laughs> something <laughs> like that something like that happened with something else. Yeah, it's just I think oh, it's probably gone. Oh yeah. No, I was thinking of I know what I was thinking of. The the uh when I was reading this report <clears throat> from NICAP, NICAP got taken over by somebody in the early 1970s and this guy that was running it became the ceo of nicap and they kicked out uh, kehoe and they got rid of everybody else and this guy just basically took all the remaining dues that was coming into the organization and used that to pay his salary and he at some point i don't know what's happened i think the nicap records are just gone this guy was like i'm not gonna I, he got all the records that nicap had and he held him hostage for back pay, which I have a feeling it was just more like a ploy just to, um, since there was obviously there was, for some reason there was obvious that, and this is gen this is true and this happened, the government was actively downplaying and suppressing UFO information for some reason, and I think that this might have been a ploy by the people that took over NICAP to as an excuse to destroy all their records. So I don't know what the, the current website is, is and, and its relationship with that organization that uh, was taken over from Kehoe and then dismantled. But that was a similar situation. The guy's like, he's paying himself like a huge salary and he's like, well, I haven't got paid for a while, so I'm gonna hold all the, uh, all the records hostage. Probably that's really not a bad strategy. I mean, uh, it worked. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's either it's a good strategy to get paid, or it's a strategy to ensure that the the library and the records got destroyed. And I don't know which which is. I don't know what happened with the NICAP records. Uh, that's I, what I was going to ask. What happened to them? I actually, I think you could find out. Do you want me to try and find out? <laughs> well, I can. I can. I know someone. I can email. I'll email someone. Oh, and ask them. Good. That's the people yeah. people in Chicago. Let's find out what happened. What find out what happened to them? Would be interesting. I mean, the best case scenario yeah. is it's it's um, they ended up with the organization in Chicago in their library, which is um, where a lot of stuff was. Another thing that uh, I told you about this the there's like a UFO library in Sweden. No, I don't remember you saying that. Yeah, I want to research. I want to research that. I may go to Sweden, one of my European trips. I may go to Sweden next year, and I was actually thinking of going to uh, check the place out. Um, so I will. I, I mean, I'll talk about that. I'll do a little research on it, and I'll talk about that. But uh, well, we talk. We talk a lot about what happens here in in forty seven in the United States. We don't really. We haven't yet broached the um, situation of what's happening in the world. Was this a worldwide thing? And, you know, we're just, we just had the Roswell uh, the, incident, of course, Kenneth Arnold and Maury, but Maury. The, yeah, the more notable of the situations. I was just reading a book on men in black. Cause we're going to, we're going to talk about the men in black. I have that. I think it was this one, The Truth Behind Men in Black by Jenny Randalls. Yes. And that's the one I've got to pick up. Yeah, pick that pick that up. And then there's the um and then I was just reading this document, the um like the sightings, UFO sightings nineteen forty seven. They don't go into stuff that was happening overseas, but apparently there was a lot of um a lot of sightings, not just in the US, but in other countries, there's this this book that I have, The Truth Behind Men in Black, is from the British viewpoint, British Australian viewpoint, and there were lots of sightings happening in in Europe at this time. There was the remember the ghost rockets that were seen over Scandinavia. Yep. Apparently, there was. I think they were saying that there was over 500 sightings of ghost rockets. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the the ghost work. rockets. Yeah. Um, there was the guy on that, uh, Abrams UFO show who used to be 
a big wig at um, MUFON, and he was saying all this stuff. Right. Was, like the ghost rockets were rocket test for like V2 rocket test for the, I don't know, European people or the Russians or something. Which may have been true, I don't know. But he was saying it was all, um, all the UFO stuff was misinformation about um, government rocket or experimental aircraft type stuff. And as we've learned now, we don't have any um, aircraft that can do the fantastic stuff that this old stuff, this stuff could, could do. What we're seeing is, oh, so one of the things I wanted to, to mention about Roswell, did you, I don't know how far you are in this, this first little book. You've been reading the other one too. But there was reports that one of the things that stuck with me from this early Roswell book is these newspaper reports saying that a farmer dragged the UFO into his barn. And I don't know if that was, that, that was the Ohio guy. I saw that. But there was like that couple, might have been Ohio guy, but it was coming out of Arizona. Oh, uh, maybe. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, the first book, the first UF Roswell book, is a little sort of yeah. I don't know. Not I won't say confusing, well, I, but it's a sort of sort of um, confusing <laughs> about this all the stuff. Well, that they they. It, well, I'm concerned that as years have gone by, that people have start just to take the base story and just starting to develop their own stories. You mean on the, it? And you mean the with, witnesses, yeah. the people that say that? They yeah, saw the things. witness. Well, they yeah, they're just the story is changing and evolving into. Although they don't find anything, you know, the most credible to me evidence. Well, not evidence, but documentation is the Albert Einstein. I know we mentioned that we mentioned this like yes, three episodes in the, a row. The Albert Einstein but, episode is probably the best episode that we have done. And you should go listen yeah. to that. Yeah. It, because it's, we are not allowed to promote it. You are not allowed to. Promote we're not it. allowed. To, I'm not allowed. We aren't. It's us. Yes. We're not allowed to promote it. It's, so it, <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, that one is the base story to me. I mean, that's the holy, to me, that's the holy grail. I don't know why that isn't, why that story didn't get more press than it did. Yeah, honestly. I would, I would really, we should keep an eye on that guy's website, which I need to look up again and uh, see if there's any follow up on that, because that's a fascinating story. If I had been the person that had discovered that, uh, I'd be really eager to, yeah. to research that in more detail and mainly specifically just to firm up the facts and the validate this woman's time which working you know as a student with Einstein for a summer it was a summer student thing and do other things to try and validate if this happened or you know she says it's happened so to validate you know find out when Einstein was traveling verify that she traveled with him see if he went to these locations at these times and really firm up that story. That would be a big deal. It would be a very big deal to firm up the evidence of that story. Well, Einstein, keep a secret. I mean, he's Einstein's a scientist scientist. I mean, let's face it. Yes. I mean, you know that more than I do. Yes. And he, he's not going to... Yeah, and I know he's taken, yeah, he took it to the grave. But it's, um, you know, top secret. So he's sworn. So, it, you know, again, people are dead. And we can't talk to them. But the lady, did, she's like, you know, I don't you know care i'm i'll talk to you about it she's older and she's what can they do to me yeah i think she's i don't you think know? she's alive and well, i'm not good no on she details. passed she was like 80 she was in her 80s she, I, I she, can't she passed away yeah i can't remember who the guy was getting the information from but there was that person she was, was in her the person was looking for further tapes that she had of the interview oh the the interviewer the person that interviewed this woman is still alive and she he was trying to get yeah further interviews from this lady she thought she had more tapes of this interview longer interview yeah because there was a lady that interviewed the lady yeah yeah and, and that's you know. that's the woman that came forward with these tapes and was um this guy was investigating i mean when you look talk about roswell this is the most you know you're right this is something that really needs to be looked into you know where did they because they the aliens were in a separate 
took them to a separate tiny facility away from the base check of take a look at those things take a look at you know they were the craft yeah the craft was you know in a separate facility um i still say wright patterson air force base but you know i think they were at ros i think it's still at roswell at that time well there was um if i remember right and i was reading another book there's these uh there was stuff that was put on a transport and that may have gone to wright patterson there was there's some interesting connections about transports and things like that which would we haven't put together and we haven't really looked at is there no private out there that saw this thing being loaded on the back of a flatbed well they're dead now but you know back in the day when people were looking for information yeah we'll have to when we look into the newer stuff i do know that there are more people that came out and talked about this stuff beyond the original book that we've just looked at or were started to look at which was all I'm really all I'm really looking for is that guy that comes out and says, "Hey, you know what? <laughs> yeah, they had this crane and they put it on the back. It was a spaceship and they put it on the back of a flatbed truck. It was a spaceship. It wasn't a weather balloon. It wasn't, you know, there was, you know, dead there was dead aliens and one survivor and you know, there I, I think the the government was a lot more scary than they are now. I mean, they're well, still scary now, but still you know, it's it, it, scary. Yeah, they're still scary, but it's back then. I mean, you were really, you, you know, somebody think of it back then when somebody tells you not to say something or bad things will happen to you. Today, the government comes up to you and says, not necessarily me, but the average person, because if the government tells me to shut up, I'll, I will. But <laughs> men in black today, there's men a lot of, yeah, those men in black will show up at my door. But today, People, a lot of people are like, I don't care what, you know, <laughs> I'll just go on the social media and talk about it. <clears throat> you know oh, yeah, I mean? they'll just, dump, then, they'll just do know. a dump. I mean, a lot of these newspapers, you know? a lot of these newspapers, I don't know if they have it now, and I don't know how valid it is, but a lot of newspapers and stuff have um, set up systems for anonymous tips. They're, they're, we're set up for political purposes, and I'm sure they've gotten, I'm sure they've gotten some UFO tips. Yeah. But they're going to look at that and they're going to, oh, it's a UFO tip. Let's forget it. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I, it's possible because, you know, they don't really. It's not on the radar, so to speak, <laughs> for them <laughs> to really be worried about that. That's going to be up to your new project to figure out with uh, Elizondo and, and that type of thing. They're going to have yes. to figure out what these things are and i mean fast forward to today we've got to figure out i mean we really we don't got to but we you know we really need to figure out what these things are doing like you said just shoot them down just shoot one down yeah we could figure the yeah. whole thing out it's, yeah. well you know, yeah they obviously aren't crashing by themselves or maybe they they seem to be crashing and no one but the government knows where they crashed yeah <laughs> you know what it's like it's really bizarre. The whole thing's really just kind of bizarre to me that it comes out like that. Because, you know, if they're around. But maybe they just don't, you know, maybe like, they just don't crash where we're... You know. I don't know. I don't know. It's one of the... It, who knows? There's... Um, I mean, there's been reports of other crashes. Actually... I may have a book that talks about that, but there's been reports of other crashes and reports of of the army or something going right in there and just like cleaning them up real quick, in and out. Yeah, it's always like that, though, Bill, isn't it? You know, every 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 story we hear involves a crash, and if it isn't already by an air force base, it, you know that they can snap it up. It's in somewhere where. Yep, the Air Force was there, and they cordoned off the area, and I couldn't see it immediately. It's like, would they beam them in? You know, it takes <laughs> hours. You know, it takes hours, and nobody else, you know, because you know if an Air Force, if, if a flying saucer crashed in my backyard or in my even my neighborhood, my town, and I heard about it, I'd be run. I'd get in my car immediately, obviously, and go over and look at this thing. And I'd have my camera out. I'd have my phone out. Yep. And I'd be taking pictures. Well, and I and, I agree yeah. with you too that it would take hours for there to be any sort of official response. You can't, you know, people, 
somebody robs a bank here and it still, you know, can take time for cops yeah. to get there. Yeah. They can't, you know, it's like they're right there. You know, and it, it, that's the other thing that makes me crazy about these UFO incidents is that the government's always there to pick up all the evidence and nobody got it. Nobody, and there's no pictures by civilians that get out about the crash and about, you know, the retrieval of the product. Well, in the past, it was easier to um, prevent that because cameras are bulky, films are light sensitive. It's easy just to, to okay, you got a camera, give me the film, empty it out. Yeah. Now it's harder, so you would expect to see more things. But then, yeah, we have a lot more cameras, but they're basically, they're, people are only, and the quality in the cameras is high, but they're still. You know, if you take a picture, you take a picture of an airplane, it looks like crap. Yeah, you can't. Even today, we already, we've talked about that. I sent you some pictures of the, you know, we had the air show here. And they were, pl I don't know what their altitude was, because I couldn't read it on my the, They, they on were my low. App. Those were low. They were pretty low. But it's, um, you still, um, if I could get a UFO that low, I could get that. But they typically don't fly that low. Yeah. yeah. At least in the reports that I hear. I was. Yeah. Did you get that? Did you look at that uh, video I sent about? Oh, just recently. The aircraft that yeah, it was in the last week. I sent no, the, the I... aircraft that's chasing the UFO. No. How do we send our stuff? So many things back and forth. Well, there's a video I sent. Go yeah. back if you go back. And um, it was on a um, the UFO text. hunters. Yeah, and I don't know if it's no, it wasn't the UFO hunters. It was just this random video i caught I and i don't think I, it was uh, oh it was yeah a yeah lady yeah. it was a lady in her yard and she was just happened to be looking up and so she videos and i said okay it's like an optical illusion or something but the leading item the ufo was the way it was moving you could tell that it wasn't linear yeah. so it wasn't a, a optical illusion of any type that was the video possibly. with something else was paralleling a plane you should, it, yeah, was right, it was yeah. right behind it. It yeah. was right behind this thing. It was yeah. it was following this UFO, what do you think is a UFO? Yep. And it was just bizarre. And I thought, you know, well, we got that. And there was you a. Know, I mean, I'm sure. I, I, I don't know if you looked at it. There was a like a symposium on UAPs. It was on YouTube. And I, I sent it to you and I watched it. There was one guy. He's a professor at a university and he actually studies this as a phenomenon and they're building cameras other than than Hobbit. and he showed uh -huh. a video during his talk of a guy that had two cameras set up i think in the seattle area and he showed um both cameras and they were i think sort of infrared cameras both cameras showed a jet flying followed by something else similar to this video that you just showed but it was an it was an infrared and he was like, this is, we, you know, this is a phenomenon that we've seen. He caught it with two different cameras. And it was like a triangular object following, following the jet. Is this lately? Yeah, this was, this was just, this was just recently. You know, the, you know, we have the TR-35B, I think it's called, it's alleged technology that we've developed that's um they say is alien you know art of you know alien reverse engineered the th technology is that the new um fighter well they haven't brought it out yet but it's okay this is the triangle this is what it's surmises and actually it has an actual designation i don't know if you've ever seen i think it's tr35b and um when you're there was a couple of there was a story about some campers out in the middle of the desert somewhere it was southern california and they were you know they just had their sleeping bags they just rolled out their sleeping bags on the ground which you know isn't something i would do on the desert but um i've, I've done that scor scorpions and things um no, i've done it so you know um well, we were down in Camp Irwin. They told us they had pallets. I mean, we had stuff. I slept on top of a deuce and a half on, on the canvas. I was like, I'm not sitting one on the ground. Oh, I, um, I hated the tent. You remember the old yeah. tents, the old canvas tents? Yeah, the smell. 
Well, now they have that con- now they have like smell. fancy fancy condominiums that they set up. But um, <laughs> I hated the old <laughs> the old canvas story. tents. <laughs> oh yeah, with air conditioning yeah. and they're insulated oh, and, and wooden, like wooden floors of- and all this other crap. But I hated the, the old amount of people. It took to put those things together. Yeah, I hate. Yeah, I hated the old canvas tents, and uh, I just drug my cot when I was out in the field the last time. I was out there for a month. I just took my cot out and put it in the, uh, put it outside of the tent. I said, I'm not sleeping in the tent. Yeah, and it was warm I, enough. So, but these guys were like, so they're sleeping. Yeah. Well, they're sleep. well, they're kind of talking or whatever. They're just laying in the sleeping bag by the fire. And all of a sudden, this triangular ship, well, they say it's a ship. It, just, it blocked out the stars slowly, just kind of, it wasn't fast and it was not It was not too high up and it blocked out the stars. They said it just was a triangular ship that kind of just floated over, basically. It didn't make any noise. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, floated right over them. You know, it was a really bizarre story. I mean, you're not going to get any evidence out of that. No, but it, I mean, it's kind of curious. That's what McDonald is talking about in the introduction that he wrote for this document on the 1947 sightings. And he, well, I, which I just read, I and mean, he says there's no. That was the time. Twenty years, seventy years ago was the time to to get. The data get instrumentation and get real data on it now we're now we're 70 years later and we're finally getting there there's you know movement on this who knows what's what's going to happen from this movement but they're finally going yeah we here yeah okay let's get some let's get some data going so let's take all, a, all i'm really all i'm really asking is for the air forces to open up the doors show us what you got um you know, it's, I think it's, I think they have, you know, I, I, you know, I know we've talked about it before. Like, well, I don't know whatever. I'm just reading the doc. Basically, we're just going over the, the situations, but just open up your doors. I mean, what do you, what are they, what are they afraid of? What's going to happen? I mean, we already, well, I think we're they, already involved in so many things. Well, the big problem, and I think we've talked about this before, is that it's not so much opening up the records is because you have um, a couple things. You have off book projects, which are exempt from, you know, record keeping requirements. And even with regular things, regular um, record keeping, a lot of these, these organizations, especially the military, um, records get lost. Or they just get they get destroyed. If somebody you know you got a new command takes over, or or a um, grouping or whatever is disbanded. What do you do with the records? A lot of times there was something that I was years ago. I was reading about this. Um, I think it was like a battalion had been disbanded, and all they the battalion records are just stuck on a shed in the base. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a you know, a battalion that had been around for or whatever it was had been around for a hundred years, and the records are just shoved in a in a shed on the base when they were disbanded because nobody knew what to do with the records. And then somebody was going in there and looking at them, and they were you know trashed. So yeah, uh, you know what do they? So that happens. That's not an unusual occurrence. Yeah. I saw a movie, you know, well, it was many years ago as well. You may have seen it. I don't remember the name of it. Mel Gibson was in this time capsule. He was an Air Force pilot, and he got did this experiment, and he was in a time capsule, and then they ended up just taking the time capsule, and they put it in this warehouse. And uh, I don't know why it was... It, it was functioning, but they created it up, put it in, and then, you know, in modern times, kids, of course, you know, got in there. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. they open up this, they open up this crate, and here's this time capsule from World War II with a guy in it, with, you no, know, no, and, uh, it's, it's called Idiocracy. Yeah. I saw that movie. Idiocracy. <laughs> I don't know. It's the same, it's the same movie. Movies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I never, it, I never it, saw that. You know, I like those fun. I like those fun movies. But yeah. um, it, it, to your point, though, I mean, that's that type of thing. It's very simplified, but it's 
yeah, what happens to the paper documents? Maybe they just don't, you know, have them. But they've got, you know, you know these ships are crated up. They're put, I don't know if the aliens are, you know what I mean? I don't know if they've, like, put them in formaldehyde, <laughs> stuck them in a big bottle and stuck them in. Okay, well, that's, you know, like they do with a, you know, a rare fish. But it, you know, it's, uh, it could be as simple as that. It's in, you know, it's at Wright Patterson. People are all dead. They know about this that, thing. It would only, it would only be they're cataloged somehow, it, probably, maybe, or maybe the yeah. cataloging got destroyed. They don't even know, you know, they've got this thing stuck in a warehouse, and they don't even know. No, there isn't anybody out there because you know the government. I don't know. I can't find. I, there's no way I'm even gonna. They'll just start opening stuff. You know what's in there? Why do we need to keep it? You know, we this it's you know. It's an artifact, but, you know, let, let's, you know, it, it could be as simple as there's, oh, we don't, nobody knows how to get to this stuff, you know, or where is it exactly? And uh, does anybody even really want to open it up? Well, we all do. There was, a, you know, I mean, talking about records and, and things that happened to him, there's, it's, you can find this online. There was a guy that worked for Project Blue Book, and when, I don't know when it was disbanded or something happened. The guy just took a bunch of files home. They weren't classified files, but he just took them home. And then someone else, a relative or something, this is online, you can find this stuff. And sold this stuff, sold this piece of Project Blue Book paperwork for sale. And some guy bought bought all this paperwork. And it was, it was documents and all this other stuff from Project Blue Book. And the guy took it home because the stuff was just gonna be thrown in the trash. And that's a problem that happens with a lot of these agencies and stuff. Unless they're mandated to preserve their um, documentation, they don't have to do it. They won't do it. And then you have the uh, added uh, bonus of you know, if they don't want to, you know, if they don't want to preserve yeah, documentation, that added bonus, it, just, yeah. it just disappears. It vaporizes. Hey, uh, was the movie you were thinking about Mel Gibson, was it um, Forever Young? Yes, it was, as a matter of fact. Have you seen it? No. Do you know it was written by J.J. Abrams? No. The screen by, <laughs> was by J.J. Abrams? i got to check that out. All right. Yeah, it was really good. It was okay. a good story. All right, we'll check it out. So that's our movie plug. You got. We'll get the... Um... Yeah, we got your movie plug. We're not talking about Clint Eastwood this week. No Clint Eastwood this you know, week. I haven't watched the new movie. I can't. I don't think I can handle. I haven't seen it. I'm sorry, Clint. I know Clint lifts yeah. every episode. No. Yeah, he I does. really have to apologize. Yeah, for you know, it's like Clint's. <laughs> I love Clint, so there isn't anything he can do that's really going to disappoint me. But well, you're it's um you're a super you fan. Know. You're probably stalking him. I am. I am. If I could, yeah. I probably would. You yeah. know, but Scott, his son, would beat the shit out of me. So yes. I wouldn't. Know. <laughs> yes. Did you see his son's new movie? Oh, Which one is it? Oh, oh. I don't remember. Um, I don't remember what it's called. Um, <laughs> he just just came out with it. I, I I started to watch it. I didn't continue watching it. We're gonna have to put notes as to our movie file. <laughs> Yeah, well, I love Scott Eastwood. He's my yeah. He's he's awesome. He was oh, he was in Suicide Squad. He was really good at that. Yeah, he's a good actor. I mean, he's a good actor. He talk. You ever hear him talk about his relationship with his dad? Uh, no. You know, because yeah, he's Clint gives him nothing. I mean, he's never giving him any money. Nothing. I hate you. <laughs> You're my child. Um, but he, I mean, lo you know, is obviously there. But he gives him lots of. Uh, he goes over to his house. I guess he's still in Monterey. Oh yeah. And he goes over to his house, and uh, uh, you know, and his dad gives him. Clint gives him pearls. Of, he talks in pearls of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> sure he does. Now listen to me, son. <laughs> um, back in the day. In back the day, in the day. day when I was <laughs> um, Dangerous. Don't That's let those they're... agents take advantage of you, yeah. Scott. And we stay away from the women. <laughs> I've got you know you're you're I've been married like eight times. Uh, Dangerous is the movie. Is his new movie is Dangerous. Well, I'll have to check it out. Check it out. Is yeah, it I started to watch it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of a I'm, 
I don't know what's happened to me movie wise. I'm just I hate everything that I see these days. Although I did see, uh, oh, have you ever watched Cowboy Bebop? No. Boy, Bebop, Bebop, Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, you gave it to. Yes, you gave it. You gave me the DVD, and I have no idea what happened. it's probably. With uh, my, I, I it's gave probably you, archived with the rest of my DVD. Did I give you Bebop, you me, or did Cowboy, I give you? Um, um, no, Bebop. I gave, gave you that? Cowboy Bebop. Well, it's, yeah, also, it's, that, it's that animated thing. Yeah, right? yeah. it's on uh, it's on uh, Netflix. You can watch it on that too. And then they have a live action version that they just came out with. No kidding. Yeah, it's on Netflix. You have Netflix. You can watch it. I have everything. I, I pay a million dollars. I have a million dollars a month for cable crap type thing. streaming. I think I've got doubles of subscriptions to <laughs> Paramount and Disney Plus. How many? How many subscriptions? I have like six subscriptions I to. to I don't, we have. We only so. have the standard two, which is uh, Prime, Amazon, and then uh, Netflix. Yeah, we're getting ready to pull the plug on our cable company. I'm paying probably two hundred and seventy dollars a month for cable. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. And then it's, and then they're not fast yeah. enough on the internet, bastards. Yeah, yeah, it, it it's it's crazy. So uh, yeah, but we enjoy our we enjoy our TV. Oh, what can I, I tell I, you? I would enjoy it more if they were putting out better shows. I'm just not seeing a lot of stuff. That's yeah, enjoyable. The Bebop wasn't bad. The live action wasn't bad. I enjoyed it. Yeah. And then I, I've started watching the old anime thing, which to compare it, which is good. They're doing a good job. They're doing a good job. Well, so, you just have to regress and watch the older stuff from the 70s. I'm, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm that, going to do that. That's what I do. I, I go to, because I complain about cable, but they have, if you've subscribed to things, it gives you more mo free movies to watch. And you can just go to On Demand. Yeah, and you just go to the free movies, and then you scroll down, and there's five thousand of them, literally. <laughs> it's, 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 so you're going. Yeah, eventually, just... you're going to find something that. Oh, I, God, that was a good movie. I, I you I, know, I'll check out this Gibson movie, but I've, I, yeah. I, there's a ton of old movies that I haven't seen that I want to watch. I hey, just scroll down, you know, and find stuff. I was one. looking at this yeah. Roswell book. Did you see the picture of the little alien guy in the spacesuit? <laughs> Which book? Uh, it's the Roswell incident. No, I didn't see it's that. On, it's on. It's on 114. So they have. There was somebody had. It's like a really bad Xerox, and it's like two. Their uniforms to me look British. Walking, a little tiny spaceman, with a power unit and a hose hooked up to him. Like you would see the Apollo astronauts right. when they would go into the, they'd have those big air conditioning units plugged into their spacesuits. I think they still do that. And they'd walk into the, you know, up to the rocket with their air conditioning units before they could hook them up to the units in right. the spacecraft because they, they'd overheat in their suits. Right. But there was this picture in the, the Roswell incident. Uh, unnamed informant turned the original of this photograph over to an agent john quinn of new orleans fbi field office claiming he had purchased the photograph from another individual for the sum of one dollar and it placing dollar. in the hands of the yeah, 1950 hands of the government because it's a picture of a man from mars in the united states mars. the uniforms look british to me they don't look american but the, the it's like a copy of a copy of a copy of it's a really bad uh, photo but it's like a little guy in a space suit with one of these air conditioning units. And this is way before, you know, this is anybody even saw these sort of units, I think. Wow. So he carried his environment. His... Well, these two, it's like two MPs are walking. I guess they're MPs. They look like MPs are walking this guy. And he's got like an, a, you know, the little environmental suitcase yeah. hooked up to him. Picture How tall is he? He's, um, Half the height of the two MPs, so he's four feet. He's a little taller than half. He's up to. Yeah, he's probably four feet tall. I mean, how much of a problem could they be? They're only four feet high. That's right. Well, yeah. from what I've been reading about the abductees, the European abductees, if people didn't know, uh, European abductees describe the aliens as uh, attractive blonde people. And American abductees describe the aliens as 
little guys with big heads and black eyes. As much as I love the U.S., I would prefer to see the European aliens. Yes, you know, I want. I want the Scandinavian aliens. Yes, that's. I want the. I want that abduction to happen. Well, then there's the guy that had sex with the girl with the. Yeah, when he off of the yeah. tractor and he got kidnapped. Yeah, and yeah. so the girl had colored hair. That they thought that was such a thing. Now everybody's got blue hair, red hair. Yeah, really red, not just red, but like red, red, red fire engine, red yeah. hair. You know, so it's that's not unusual today. You know, but um, yes, maybe maybe that came from that came from them. Well. Situations. Hey, we're coming up on an hour. Um, I think we've. Oh, that went that went by pretty fast. Yeah, we didn't. Uh, we we will continue probably in a couple of weeks and talk about uh, we're either going to do Men in Black or continue on sort of Roswell and the or more more likely we should talk about the wave of 1947 and go into. Yeah, some... we can continue on that. We can, um, you know, delve into that. Yeah, I want to look into some of these cases. I mean, it's a pretty thickish report. It's not too crazy, but they highlight some of the uh, some of the sightings, and and I think I'll find that interesting. Cool. And then uh, maybe a little more on Roswell, and if we get stuck, we'll go into the Gulf Breeze sightings and move we've forward in, forward in time. Yeah, we've got uh, the lizard people. The li you know, the lizard, lizard people are our. Uh... Lizard. You know, they're a govern our government. Yes, they are. And then the uh, so we got we're going to do Men in Black coming up. Hopefully, we're going to do yeah. um, we'll do the more on the wave 1947 Gulf Breeze sightings coming up at some point. We'll be jumping way ahead with that. Um, we can uh, do. Hopefully, we're going to do some video. Get it on YouTube if we can stop yes. our internet yeah. from buffering. <laughs> We can talk for an hour and it's fine. And then as soon as we start recording, it doesn't it, want to do it. Everything vaporizes. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see how that goes. And, All right. All right. Thanks for listening to the latest episode of the Alien Probe Podcast. We welcome comments, questions, or requests to Alien Probe Podcast at gmail.com. Visit us on Facebook at alienprobe.net, Twitter at Alien Probe Pod. Also, YouTube, catch us uh, on audio only right now on YouTube. We're working on get that video up so you can see two old guys talking to each other about. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> we're hoping to get producer Robert on here. We're Hello. trying to rang we're trying to wrangle him in also. Hello. And we'll catch you next time. All right. And, uh, thanks again, producer Robert Anthony. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> yes, we're still recording. Um, still recording. <laughs> we are still recording after we spend an hour just chatting, and then we start to record, and technical difficulties explode. And then we've used all our stuff. Yeah, we've used all our stuff. <laughs> we've, we've drained the energy. Wait a minute, we already talked about that. We drain the energy of the internet, so it's no longer working.